Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the first translation theorem to compute inverse Laplace transforms. So this is the first translation theorem, the regular theorem that you would see on the internet or in a book, and it says that if you have the Laplace of f of t times an exponential, you can drop the exponential function and replace it with a shift. So as a quick example before we do inverse ones, let's say we have the Laplace of, I don't know, t times e to the 4t. I'll do it really quickly. So you drop the e, so you get the Laplace of t, and you replace the e with the shift. So the line, and then s to s minus a, so s to s minus 4. And then you know that when you have the Laplace of t, there's a 1 here. And it's always that number factorial, so 1 factorial, and it's 1 higher on the bottom. And then you go from s to s minus 4. So that would be 1 over s minus 4 squared. So that's the regular way of using the first translation theorem. If you're just computing Laplace transforms, you drop the e, and then you replace it with the shift. But when you're going backwards, it's a little bit different. So let's say we have the inverse Laplace of, I don't know, how about uh, 1 over s minus 2 cubed. Say we have this. So we're trying to find the inverse Laplace of this. So we have to use a formula here. So recall that if you have the Laplace transform of t to the n, that's equal to n factorial and it's one higher on the bottom. So finding the inverse Laplace of this means if we have n factorial over s to the n plus 1, that's t to the n. So this is the formula we want to use in this problem. However, we cannot use this formula yet because we have an s minus 2. That's why we have the first translation theorem. So the first translation theorem will allow us to do a shift. So we need to get rid of this s minus 2 and make it an s so we can use this formula. So what you do is you put the inverse Laplace symbol and you just write it as s cubed. And we take that shift from s to s minus 2, like this. So you can do that. Basically, you replace the s minus 2 with an s, and you write the notation. Notice where I put the line. I put it inside the brackets. The shift always takes place with s. It's always in the s space. Over here, it takes place outside, because this is these are s's. Now the s's are inside, so the line goes inside. You might be wondering, why didn't I write something there? Ah, that's because we need a factorial there. So notice it's always 1 higher on the bottom. Here it's n plus 1, here it's n. So there's a 3 here, so we need a 2 factorial here, so a 2 factorial. But if you put a 2 factorial there, you got to take it away. So you put it there. Really slick. So again, you do the shift, and then realize that you need one less factorial up here. Then it's 1 over 2 factorial, so that they cancel. So now we're in good shape. This is 1 over 2. This whole thing here, what happens is, this is going to give you a t squared from the formula. And if you think about what happened before uh, with the first translation theorem, the e became a shift. Well, it works backwards too. The shift becomes an e. This will be e to the 2t. And that would be the final answer. So now you see two examples, one how to go forward and one how to go backward. I believe going backwards requires a lot more finesse. In my opinion, this is much harder than this. But after you do a couple of these, you'll start to get the hang of it. Maybe we should do one more example. I'm going to erase this and let's do another one. Why not? I'll just make one up and we should be able to do it. Oh, I know. How about something like this? Inverse Laplace of, let's say we have uh, s minus 2 over s minus 2 squared plus 4. Totally rigged to work out to make it easy, but it's a good example nevertheless. So this should remind you of cosine. Remember, if you have the inverse Laplace of s over s squared plus k squared, you get the cosine of kt. Remember, cosine has the s, sine has the k. So here it's not s, it's s minus 2, but we can make it an s using our shifting powers. So this is equal to the inverse Laplace. Let's replace the s minus 2 with an s, and this is s squared plus 2 squared. You can think of it as 2 squared. k is going to be your 2. So, oh, oh, I messed up. Right, what goes here? The line, right? We have to write the shift inside because the shift takes place 
in the S space, right? The spaces of S's, it's a fun way to say it. So always have the shift where the S's are. So we know now this is cosine of 2t. And this is going to give us an e to the 2t because it's s minus a, so it's e to the 2t. If it was s plus 2, it would be e to the negative 2t. And that would be the final answer. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there who is trying to learn about the first translation theorem. Take care.